Thank you for downloading this podcast. Hi, and welcome to the podcast for Solomon Staircase Masonic Lodge number 357, where we talk about all things related with Freemasonry, including hermetic teachings, philosophy, reason, spirituality, and much more. We're located in Buena Park, Southern California. Tune in as we continue to update our podcast with informative talks and articles for Masons worldwide and those who would like to inquire within. The following article is from Biography.com, and we'll learn a little bit about Buffalo Bill or William Frederick Bill Cody. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his nickname by hunting and killing over 4,000 buffalo, and his status as an Old West legend was cemented with his traveling Wild West show. Who was Buffalo Bill Cody? Born near LeClaire in Scott County, Iowa in 1846, Buffalo Bill Cody rode on the Pony Express at the age of 14, fought in the American Civil War, served as a scout for the Army, and was already an Old West legend before mounting his famous Wild West show, which traveled the United States and Europe. Early Life Born near LeClaire in Scott County, Iowa on February 26, 1846, William F. Cody worked for a freight company as a messenger and wrangler before trying his luck as a prospector in the Pikes Peak Gold Rush in 1859. The next year, at age 14, Cody joined the Pony Express, fitting the bill for the advertised position, skinny, expert riders willing to risk death daily. Buffalo Bill the Hero Cody later served in the American Civil War, and in 1867 he began buffalo hunting to feed construction crews building railroads, which would give him the nickname that would define him forever. His own assessment puts the number of buffalo he killed at 4,280 in just over a year and a half. In 1868, Cody returned to his work for the Army as Chief of Scouts, and his ongoing work with the military garnered him the Congressional Medal of Honor in 1872, which was subsequently stripped and then reinstated all the while becoming a national folk hero thanks to the dime novel exploits of his alter ego, Buffalo Bill. In late 1872, Cody went to Chicago to make his stage debut in The Scouts of the Prairie, one of Ned Buntline's original Wild West shows. Buntline was also the author of the Buffalo Bill novels. The next year, Wild Bill Hickok joined the show, and the troupe toured for ten years. Beyond a Showman In 1883, Cody founded his own show, Buffalo Bill's Wild West a circus-like extravaganza that toured widely for three decades in the United States and later on in Europe. Besides Buffalo Bill himself, the Wild West show starred sharpshooter Annie Oakley and, for one run, Chief Sitting Bull. Cody died on January 10, 1917, in Denver, Colorado. A champion of women's rights and a lifelong soldier, Buffalo Bill Cody was more than just a Wild West showman and buffalo hunter. But his larger-than-life persona, at times real and at others fictitious, is what lives on in the hearts and minds of fans of the Frontier West. Now, an interesting point I wanted to bring up here, I just finished reading Killing Crazy Horse by Bill O'Reilly and... uh, I forget the name of the other author. Author, anyways, one of the things they talk about, and you know, Bill O'Reilly does a lot of research into his stuff before he writes his books, was that part of the reason, or one of the reasons that Buffalo Bill took the nickname Buffalo Bill, was because people used to call him Duck Bill Cody because apparently he had big lips and a big nose. Now, don't know which of those is true, but apparently, you know, that's another one of the uh, potential. You know, ways he got his nickname is because he didn't like being called Duck Bill, so he took on Buffalo Bill. So, anyways, a little bit of uh, extra knowledge there worth looking at. And with that, uh, that concludes this article. Let's see if we can find one more to talk a little bit more about Brother Bill Cody and maybe more about his Masonic exploits. I thought I'd go ahead and add this one more article in here because uh, I found it rather interesting as I was doing some research. 13 Things You Probably Didn't Know About Buffalo Bill Cody. And this is from the website CodyYellowstone.org. He was the most interesting man in the world long before that Dos Equis guy. Brother Buffalo Bill Cody entertained a queen, founded a town, and championed the rights of women, children, and minorities. Historians are fascinated by his quirky, colorful life, and nearly one million travelers from around the world, intent on experiencing a great American adventure, visit the town he built just outside of Yellowstone National Park every year. 
Thousands of the Cody Yellowstone country visitors will learn about Buffalo Bill's life and times as they explore the Smithsonian-affiliated Buffalo Bill Center of the West, experience the always entertaining Cody Night Rodeo, and visit historic attractions like Pahaska Teepee, his hunting lodge at the entrance to Yellowstone National Park, and the Irma Hotel, which he built in 1902 and named after his daughter. While visitors will certainly leave with a better understanding of the life and times of Buffalo Bill Cody, it is difficult to absorb a complete picture of a man who is legendary even in his own time. Here are some nuggets of Buffalo Bill Cody's life that are not widely known. On the tail end of a lengthy hunting trip throughout the West in 1902, he pulled his six-horse stagecoach to a stop in front of Salt Lake City's Templeton Hotel and registered for a room. He signed the hotel register, W.F. Cody, comma, Buffalo Bill, and in the space to list his residence merely wrote, The World. We were this close to having a Buffalo Bill Comstock. While employed as a hunter to supply bison meat to railroad workers, Bill Cody engaged in an eight-hour competition with another hunter, Bill Comstock, to see who could shoot the most bison and earn the Buffalo Bill nickname. Cody shot 68, about one every seven minutes, soundly beating Comstock's total of 48 bison. He was lousy with money. Although he built a fortune with his Wild West show, he was a generous lender to friends on the down and out, and he made a series of bad investments that ultimately led to financial ruin. One of the final financial blows was in 1902 when he lost much of his Wild West profits in an unsuccessful mining venture in Arizona. He was deeply in debt when he died in 1917. He even tried his hand in journalism. Buffalo Bill started the Cody Enterprise in 1899, three years after founding the town of Cody, which had grown to a population of 300. The newspaper is still in operation today under the same masthead. Buffalo Bill got his sense of fairness and honesty. His father, Isaac, barely survived an 1853 stabbing following an anti-slavery speech he delivered in Fort Leavenworth, then part of the Kansas Territory. Pro-slavery sentiment in the town made life difficulty for the Cody family, and at one point, a plot to murder Isaac was foiled when young William, not yet 10 years old, rode 30 miles to warn him of the plan. He became a household name because of an imaginative dime novelist. Learning of his feats as a hunter and scout, novelist Ned Buntline authored a book called Buffalo Bill, the King of the Bordermen, the first of some 550 dime novels about the larger-than-life character. Buffalo Bill's life has inspired many artists, even long after his death. Mark Twain described his Wild West show as the country's most distinctly American pop culture export to the world. F. Scott Fitzgerald combined the personalities of Buffalo Bill and Daniel Boone to create Dan Cody, a character in The Great Gatsby. Film director and screenwriter Sam Peckinpah had Buffalo Bill in mind when he created Randolph Scott's character in Ride the High Country. Even the Beatles found inspiration in their light-hearted, satirical song, The Continuing Story of Bungalow Bill. Upon his death in Colorado, his estranged wife Louisa sold his body for $10,000. The publisher of the Denver Post and the city of Denver bought the rights to bury Buffalo Bill's body. The Buffalo Bill grave and museum in Golden may or may not be his final burial place, though. Some Cody residents still believe the story about an elaborate plot to steal his body from the mortuary and return it to Cody where he wanted to be buried. Prominent friends formed the Buffalo Bill Memorial Association shortly after his death. Through the association, they secured funding from the Wyoming legislature and commissioned sculptor Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney to create The Scout, a bronze sculpture that stands at the entrance to the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Cody was a Freemason who achieved the rank of Knight Templar in 1889 and 32nd degree rank in the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry in 1894. Cody was an ardent supporter of rights for women and minorities, and he insisted on equal pay for all members of his traveling shows, regardless of gender. What we want to do is give women even more liberty than they have, he once said. Let them do any kind of work they see fit, and if they do it as well as a man, give them equal pay. Buffalo Bill received a Medal of Honor while serving the 3rd Cavalry Regiment as a civilian scout. Congress later rescinded the, the medal, as well as all others awarded to civilians. In 1989, Cody's medal was officially reinstated. He was known as a fearless Indian fighter, but he was also a committed advocate for the rights of American Indians. He once said, Every Indian outbreak that I have ever known has resulted from broken promises and broken treaties by the government. And uh, as I mentioned in one of the other epi uh, articles, yeah, I just read Killing Crazy Horse by B Bill O'Reilly, and it's, it's pretty crazy when you realize how 
badly we screw the the U.S. government screwed over the Native Americans through time, just as that last paragraph said, broken treaties and broken promises. So with that, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit about our brother, Buffalo Bill. And this last article we're going to read is from the Grand Lodge of Ohio, Free and Accepted Masons website. And it's called Brother Buffalo Bill Cody, Freemason and Frontiersman. Brother Buffalo Bill Cody was born William Frederick Cody on a farm in LeClaire, Iowa, on February 26, 1846. It wasn't long before his father Isaac Cody abandoned the farm, moving the family to Kansas. After his father's passing in the Kansas Border War when Brother Cody was 11, he joined the Pony Express, a mail delivery service that utilized relays of horse-mounted riders at age 14. He fit the job description perfectly, which called for skinny expert riders willing to risk death daily. He made the longest trip on record, 321 miles, without stopping except for meals and to change horses. His mother, Mary Leacock Cody, a woman of the highest character, continued to raise him, fostering him in fortitude and courage, which he would carry throughout the rest of his life. She, unfortunately, passed away while Brother Cody was still in his teens after enlisting in the 9th Kansas Cavalry. After this, he then served as a scout in Tennessee and a trooper in Missouri. In 1867, he went on to sign an 18-month-long contract with the Goddard brothers to furnish the Kansas Pacific Railroad laborers with all the buffalo meat required to feed them. To fulfill his contract, he killed over 4,280 buffalo, earning him his famous moniker, Buffalo Bill. Brother Cody was close friends with Civil War Captain W.B. Brown, who organized the Platte Valley Lodge No. 32 under the Grand Lodge of Nebraska. It's likely that Brother Cody petitioned almost immediately after the lodge was formed in 1870 and was welcomed into membership on his 24th birthday that same year. On January 10, 1871, Brother Cody was raised a Master Mason, and during this time he gained national recognition for both being a guide for distinguished hunting parties and for his military efforts. In 1872, he was awarded the Medal of Honor for his service in a skirmish while on detached duty with the 3rd Cavalry. While visiting New York after an invitation to celebrate his accomplishments, he saw himself portrayed in a stage play. From that time on, he and his partner Texas Jack Omohundro split their time between the planes and the stage. Brother Cody founded his Buffalo Bills Wild West in 1883, which boasted talents like Annie Oakley and Chief Sitting Bull. It was described as a circus-like extravaganza that toured for three decades in the U.S. and then eventually Europe, where it was first shown overseas in 1887 during Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee. While he was in England, he petitioned Euphrates Chapter 15, Royal Archmasons of North Platte, Nebraska, by mail. On November 18, 1888, while splitting his time between a show in Staten Island and running a stock ranch near North Platte, he advanced to the degree of Mark Master, was inducted into the Oriental Chair, received and acknowledged a most excellent master, and was exalted to the Royal Arch degree. In 1889, Brother Cody then went on to petition Palestine Commandery No. 13, Order of Knights Templar of North Platte, Nebraska, elected and received the illustrious Order of the Red Cross, and received the Order of Malta and was dubbed a Knight Templar. In 1892, between tours of Europe, he also petitioned Tangier Temple of the Ancient Arabic Order Nobles of the Mystic Shrine of Omaha, Nebraska. Around this time, he also led a hunting expedition through the Grand Canyon and served as a marshal during the inauguration of President Benjamin Harrison. After extremely successful years in show business during 1893 and 1894, Brother Cody was well on his way to not only being the most famous man in the world, but also the most photographed. Brother Buffalo Bill Cody became a Scottish Rite Mason on April 4, 1894 in the Valley of New York City, ancient accepted Scottish Rite Northern Masonic jurisdiction. Brother Cody was dedicated to his fraternal duties and adhered to the principles of friendship, morality, and brotherly love. Described as a man of his word, Brother Cody interacted and befriended people of all races, religions, genders, and occupations. Cody was known for his advocacy for the rights of Native Americans and for this excellent treatment of Native Americans who participated in his show. He treated everyone as equals and always lent a helping hand to those in need. Brother Cody was a true embodiment of the values of Freemasonry. 
Brother Cody passed away suddenly on a trip to visit his sister in Denver on January 10, 1917, at the age of 71. He is not only remembered for his scouting, frontier exploring, military service, and showmanship, but also being an exemplary Mason, upholding the ideals of brotherly love, relief, and truth. The following article is from the August 1999 Scottish Rite Journal of Freemasonry. Remembering Brother Bill, Buffalo Bill that is, written by William Herbert Skip Boyer, 32nd degree. Now there's actually a note here that says, Sadly, Brother William Cody's grave atop Lookout Mountain outside Denver bears no Masonic marking. Well, since 1999 when this article was written and at least a couple years ago, that is no longer true. There is a marker up there, and what I'm going to try to do is find a picture that I took of it, and I'll put that as the uh, cover picture for this podcast. From this mountaintop, you could have watched the history of the American West as it rolled past, a nearly unbroken pageant in the valleys below. For centuries, this place of high solitude looked down on the quiet passing of various peoples moving in harmony with the land and the animals. Explorers speaking Spanish came, followed by rough-edged men of the mountains, seeking only beaver pelts and solitude. From over the eastern horizon came covered wagons, miners, families, and farmers. A small community popped up on the creek below the mountain. Cherry Creek, the miners called it. Railroads came, bringing more people. Cherry Creek outgrew its village name and replaced it with something much more grand-sounding. It became Denver and it sprawled along the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains and lapped up the valley and canyons around Lookout Mountain. Today you can drive to the top of Lookout Mountain. From its pine-covered summit, you can see the pinnacle of western development, a great metropolis where once buffalo wandered undisturbed. Watching with you from that mountaintop, perhaps in bemused amazement, is one of the legendary figures of the American West. This marks the gravesite of Colonel William F. Buffalo Bill Cody, whose name is synonymous with the excitement and showmanship of Western history. Colonel Cody has always been one of my personal heroes. I admire him even as I recognize a certain amount of Barnum's humbug in his tales. Perhaps that's one of the reasons I do admire him. The Colonel knew my grandmother. Grandmother Boyer was something of a free spirit in her youth, and the arrival of Cody's Great Wild West Show in Omaha to kick off the new touring season each year was a special occasion for her. For those and other reasons... When my business travels took me to Denver recently, I made a side trip up Lookout Mountain. I'd been there as a small boy of five or so with my parents. Somehow things seem a good deal smaller this trip. Once you contend with the usual array of cheap gift shops and pseudo-museums, you walk up a winding path to the summit. There, surrounded by a low cast-iron fence, are the graves of William and Louisa Cody, surmounted by a rounded stone marker with their names on a bronze plaque. Also on the plaque is the unusual notation that this was the spot where Cody wanted to be buried. This, of course, is not so. It was and remains a myth originally promoted by the owners of the Denver Post, who had a financial interest in Cody's enterprises during his last years. In other words, the colonel was broke, and the newspaper owners, a couple of history's more accomplished promoters and con men, owned him, lock, stock, and show wagon. But those shabby stories aside, it was Buffalo Bill who is remembered today, not Tamman and Bonfils of the Post. I enjoyed my brief visit. A few other tourists passed by, but for the most part, I had the place to myself. I said a short prayer of thanks for Colonel Cody and his family and picked up a few small bits of trash. On the backside of the stone marker is another plaque, noting that it was placed there to honor Buffalo Bill by his fellow Elks. That was when I suddenly realized that what I was looking for and hadn't found... There is no indication anywhere on the site that this is the last resting place of Brother William Cody, Master Mason, Scottish Rite, Knights Templar, and Noble of Tangier Shrine Temple. No mark at all. And the most amazing thing about this is, his funeral was one of the largest Masonic funerals in American history. Buffalo Bill, or Brother Buffalo maybe, was called from labor to refreshment on January 10, 1917. He was in Denver at the time. Following a temporary interment... He was buried in a permanent tomb carved in the granite atop Lookout Mountain on June 3, 1917. Services were conducted by Worshipful Master G.W. Parfit of Golden City Lodge No. 1. The eight pallbearers were Brother Templars. Masons came from throughout the West. The procession up Lookout Mountain included 3,000 automobiles. Wrote one observer, 
Everybody attached to the funeral seemed to be Masons. They all wore the white lambskin aprons, the car drivers, the policemen at all the intersections from the mortuary to the west edge of Denver. On the way to Golden and on to Lookout Mountain, there were more Masonic policemen at every major intersection. I didn't know where they found so many Masons. In the 81 years since that Masonic ceremony, it has become popular to debunk historic figures. They did this, they didn't do that. They were only a little great or not really great at all. I don't believe it. I've read all Buffalo Bill's biographies, and I still come to the same conclusion. I wish I had known him. I wish I could have seen his show, watched him ride, talked to him as my grandmother did. I wish I could have shaken his hand in Masonic Brotherhood. I wish I could have sat in lodge with him with the colorful, flamboyant, wonderful Buffalo Bill Cody. And now, I wish his brothers had remembered to honor his memory with some small mark on top of Lookout Mountain. Here is the history of the West. Freemasonry was an important part of it. The square and compasses belong here with one of the craft's most legendary brothers. Thank you for listening. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a comment. We enjoy hearing from our listeners. If you really like what you heard, share this podcast with your friends and lodge members. Visit us online at solomonstaircase.org.